All right, Celtics post game live. Tom Giles Gal back here in uh, Boston. We got uh, Drew Carter and Eddie House still in Atlanta. Celtics fall in this one, 123 to 122 in overtime. Scal, just start with you real quick. What did you think about the late game, the the, uh, the management at the end there, the late game execution from the Celtics yeah. as uh, they fall just short in this one? I mean, I didn't love uh, I didn't love regulation, but I was fine with the way that they executed in overtime. I think they had an idea of going to Porzingis. He made the right basketball play. Jalen Brown made a tough shot. What do you guys think uh, down in Atlanta, Eddie, of, of the Celtics and the way they kind of drew things up at the end of regulation and in overtime? Well, I thought it, it, at the end of the fourth quarter, I thought that they were just stagnant. They were just waiting for somebody to get a, a shot, playing one-on-one basketball, got totally away from the way that they play. And then I thought just defensively, their attention to detail, too many offensive rebounds. I know this team crashes the glass. If you know that, you have to make sure you find a body, put a body on somebody, and go close out that possession with the rebound. You know, I think the, the Celtics did take advantage of Atlanta's aggressiveness on the offensive glass in transition. You probably want to find a happy medium between doing that and allowing them to get whatever 18 offensive rebounds and a bunch of second chance points. Bogdanovich is three to tie the game. That was off an offensive rebound, which was kind of the story of the game. Um, and then frustrating at the end there with that last possession of regulation. They had the entire shot clock and it was four dudes standing around and one guy taking a pretty bad shot. Yeah. Um, and meanwhile, the other side of this is that Dejounte Murray goes for 44 points and uh, he had 11 in overtime. We saw different guys defend him you, you saw a good possession from Derek White Drew Holiday had a nice possession in there as well uh, but in the end DeJounte Murray just able to, to make the shot was that just the, the clutchness of, of DeJounte yeah. Murray in this situation I mean I think Eddie talked about just the lack of defensive intensity to start the game and then he got it going and it's really at that point he's a really good player like a lot of people think DeJounte Murray is a star on, on a lot of different teams he could be a lead guy and to try to shut that off later on it's tough and uh I give him a lot of credit. Like, they played three games in four nights, and he's on a back-to-back, -back, and it looks like he had the most energy out there. Well, how do you do it like this? Eddie, what did you think of DeJounte Murray's performance down the stretch? I thought that we they hunted out Porzingis' matchup, and we didn't make the adjustment till late there when we was forcing the, the guard to go over the top and, and trail instead of switching. They were hunting that switch, that switching matchup the whole time, and he was able to get to where he wanted. We didn't make the adjustment. And sometimes you got to just say, hey, you know what? Let's get the ball out of his hands, and let's rotate out of that. But, you know, you got to tip your cap off to DeJounte Murray. He came out, and he was chirping from the beginning. So this game meant a lot for him. I think Scal makes a good point, too, about how much he's played three and four nights yep. back to back. He was questionable coming in. He played 47 minutes tonight. He got 44 shots up, scored all 11 of their points in overtime. And, yeah, you're right, Eddie. He was he was talking that talk all the way back to Monday, and he, he backed it up tonight. Even though it did take him a million shots to get there, he was the reason they won. Think yeah. about it. You know, we're obviously upset, Giles, but if he doesn't make a really tough shot with point one left, the Celtics walk out of here with a win. But that was solid D, but he already yeah. had it going. We yeah. gave him too many looks and, and too many easy looks where he was comfortable. We just – we didn't really make him uncomfortable until there in the, in the overtime where Drew Holiday was getting into him, and he has a, a couple of tough shots. But besides that, I thought that he had a masterful game being out there, being in control, and had the most energy in three games for sure. in four nights. You go back to regulation. The Celtics were up by three with under 30 seconds to go. It was an offensive rebound that led to a Boyan Bogdanovich three-pointer, and that was kind of was one of the big themes in this one was the second-chance points. Sure. 28 of those for Atlanta in this yeah, game. Yeah, so I'll tie in the second-chance points with the defense because a lot of times when you get uh, cracked on the glass, it's, you're giving up dribble penetration, a big is coming over, and a guy is getting offensive rebounds. So rebounding and poor defense in this game is tied in together, and I just thought, like, Atlanta looked like the more aggressive team, the team that was quicker to the ball. You know, I didn't love our defense throughout. We had 40 points in the paint in the first half. That was uh, – had to be close to a season high. On the year, we gave up 60 today, but that's because they started knocking down threes in the second half. So, 28 second-chance points. You know, sometimes this game, on the contrary, like people get caught up in execution and, and shots made and, you know, do we take too many threes? You know, we're usually a great rebounding team. We're a great defensive team, and we've kind of lost that identity – you saw some of the stats throughout the game about where we were and where we've been in our last four games. Well, today is not going to help that either. So right now, you know, our defense is definitely slipping. We're, a, you know, a top five team in both categories. Our defense is the reason why we're like the odds on favorite to win an NBA championship. 
And if you're not going to defend the ball and you're not going to rebound the ball, then you're in an uphill battle. And, you know, we still could have won this game. Jalen Brown makes an excellent shot to, to put us up. But when you look back, the lesson learned is you've got to play right from the start. You can't allow what happened in the first half. And you have to have, those, you have, to have a battle and a mindset to battle on the glass because that's ultimately what the way you win championships, defense, rebounding, taking care of the basketball. But – Today, our defense was poor, and our rebounding was very poor. It felt like there was almost a, a couple minutes there in the third quarter, like f- between five and three minutes to go in the third quarter, where there were some good defensive trips where they got some blocks. No, no question. You know, and, and they're trying to distance themselves from the Hawks and just say, hey, we're the much better team here. But Atlanta just hung around. How much is, how much is it also that – you let a team kind of hang around and get some confidence that it's going to be that much more difficult to put them away. Yeah, there's, there's some truth to that. But I think, like, if people are watching this show right now, they're, they're wondering, is this going to be something that comes back to bite us, right, in the playoffs? And, you know, only thing I could say is it seems like when it's a big game against marquee opponents, we seem to handle our business. And for whatever this little stretch is, you know, and it's not just – Don't get me wrong. It's not just the Atlanta game. If you go back to the Chicago game, you heard me on the broadcast, the first three quarters, we're like picking and choosing when we want to defend. And maybe that's maybe that's natural with with the season being so close to being done with the giant lead. You're going to conserve your energy, you know, whatever. You're going to go in there. You're going to try to get wins by expending as little energy as possible. So if that is the case, then, then we should talk about that. But All I hear is building great habits. All I see is coasting to the finish line. So either way, I'm fine because I feel like the Celtics are going to have home court advantage. You guys know where I stand. I don't don't necessarily believe that there's a carryover. Like if we don't guard Atlanta well, all of a sudden when we get to the playoffs, we're not going to be able to guard. I don't believe that. I really don't. But it seems like the message coming through is developing good habits. And we'll find out. New Orleans is a good basketball team. They play tough. Zion is living at the rim. So we'll find out if we're about that life right from the start or if we're in this world where we're going to kind of coast to the finish line. And, and, you know, if that's where we're at, then let's just be honest about it and let's admit it. Okay. Um, Let's actually look at, because we talked about it a little bit off the top of the postgame show, and we talked about it with Drew and Eddie, but we have the video now just taking a look at some of these final possessions because that's the other thing that everyone's going to be talking about coming from this game, right? Especially after what we saw Monday, but Jason Tatum at the end of regulation, especially after the foul on Matthews, that gave the Celtics the ability to take the last shot. All right, so, yeah, so in this situation, Tatum has the ball. Now, I got a problem with the play. I mean, the one thing I will say is Tatum doesn't have a lot of space to work. If you look, stop it. I mean, I don't know if we could stop it. Maybe I should go up to the board and break this thing down. You know, in the NBA, you can't, you can't go to what you want to go to. You have to go to space. And when Tatum got the ball, the whole right side of the floor was wide open. There was one guy in the corner, which basically means the whole right side of the floor is open. Holiday set a screen. He, he peeled out of the screen, and now Tatum had an, not a lot of uh, space to work to his left, but he had to go left. So I look at that. I'm not blaming Jason Tatum. I'm not even blaming Drew Holiday. But I will say it was poor execution by the Celtics because that ball has to find a, uh, open space. That, that ball has to find an area. And the area where Tatum went, you know, he's a big-time shot maker, a, a big-time shot creator. But that's, that play right there was never going to lead to Tatum getting downhill. So I just didn't like our spacing in that final possession. Now you go to the overtime one. Yeah, we I'm got all, that one as well for I'm you. all good with this. It's Porzingis with space. He finds Jalen Brown, and he goes to an open spot. So I have no problem with the, uh, the overtime possession. So the overtime possession, and, and as you're referencing it, you know, Celtics are down by one. Jalen Brown, um, you know, is able to give him a one-point lead here as it goes into Porzingis, who finds Jalen Brown cutting towards the elbow here, knocks down the jumper. Yeah, I mean, uh, you saw DeJounte Murray shift over. He got rid of the ball, and Jalen Brown got to a spot. We know he's a mid-range assassin. So I got no problem with, with the way that this play was executed and the spacing of this play. All right, so that gave the Celtics the one-point lead, and then you thought, all right, just one stop. They just need one stop with six seconds to go, and DeJounte Murray uh, – this seems like pretty good defense from Drew Holiday. Yeah, I mean, he was already cooking at this point. I mean, yeah. 44 shot attempts. He made 19 of them right there. Got a little dance, a little shimmy. 
telling everybody, you guys don't know, but I am him. Yep, he told the Schultz's bench, I am him. And he was talking trash the other game, too. So, you know what? I got, like, from the Hooper side of me, I respect DeJounte Murray and what he does, the way he plays, and the fact that he's on a back-to-back -back and he's going after Boston Celtics. Like, he is about that life, and I actually really enjoy watching him play during that time. Okay, this is the final shot with .1 left. I don't, did that go in? I don't think that went in. It went under. Did it go under? I can't tell because they said it went in. Oh, yeah, it did go under. Either way. Yeah. No, yeah. so, the, so the, I, I'll just explain to the people the, the thought here. Point one on the clock. The thought is to shoot the ball into the basket. There is no goaltending on side out of bounds. So as that ball is about to drop in the hoop, if you go up and just barely nick the ball, just – as it's going through, you could touch the ball. That would be a bucket for you, who wins up by the rim, and it would be a game-winning shot. That's the only play that they have. So that great job by the Celtics. Derek White was just short on it. you got to go over the rim on that one, but, you know, I'm not blaming that on Derek White.